Hello everyone, welcome back once again for more of Game Fest. Let's get right into it, shall we? So here we are. Uh, so we are still doing arcade games. When we last left off, I had just finished Defender, which um, I couldn't figure out how to get out of. Uh, if you actually read the readme file for the game, which I didn't do because I was in a hurry, or which is a nice way of saying that I'm dumb, uh, I. If, if you actually look in the uh, readme file here, it shows, where is it? F1. F1 quits the game. But that's kind of, that's unusual. I mean, what game, realistically, what game uses F1 as a quit button? Uh, I mean, there are games that have used more bizarre. I've seen games that use Control F10 or something like that as quit quit keystrokes. And it just kind of makes me think, uh, really? What, what, was, was there some kind of thinking behind that? But... Anyway, um, moving on. So we finished with Defender. The next game is Diamond Dash. This is a Load Runner clone. Uh, this is in Softmore 8 Pro 19. Softmore 8 and Pro 19. So I just wanted to see if there is a document. It looks like there is, in fact, a dd.doc. So let's browse dd.doc. Diamond Dash. This game is from 1993, which makes it newer than it looks. Uh, it's from Softech, David Fleming, requirements, uh, PC, AT, or PS2. Not Model 30. Wonder what happens if we try to run this on a Model 30. Inquiring minds want to know. Uh, oh boy, it needs DOS 2 or later. That's pretty, uh, that's pretty, pretty demanding there. All right, anyway, so it is very similar to the broader bun classic Load Runner, which is a polite way of saying I ripped off the game. Uh, it is not public domain, it is shareware. You should register it by sending $15 to David Fleming in Roanoke, Virginia. There is a story which I am going to skip over. You can read it there if you'd like. Might be a good idea to note the controls, at least that uh, uh, Z or Z and X are for shooting left and right. And there is also a handy built-in uh, cheat with the L key. So, all right, let's go ahead and play DD. I mean, you folks have probably seen Load Runner at some point in your lives. So, what is there really to say? It is Load Runner. In pretty much every possible way. Yeah, it it is it is very similar to the to the Broader and Classic Load Runner. That's that's because it it is Load Runner. It's not very similar. It it is Load Runner. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing, because Load Runner is uh, a good game. So, yeah, no, no complaints from me, I mean. I just, I do find it amusing how many different ways people uh, try to repackage the past. I mean, I guess, I guess I shouldn't complain too much, because quite frankly, um, this, I mean, this game is from what, 23 years ago as I make this video? Oh, that guy just snuck up on me because I wasn't focusing on what I was doing because I was trying to think about what I'm saying. I mean, I'm realizing now as I play more of these games that... Oh, I'm stuck here. Uh, yes, I was stuck there. Uh, I'm realizing as I play more of these games that um, really quite a lot of these are based on either some old classic arcade games or... Um, they're basically extremely derivative of a familiar gameplay formula that uh, has been done countless times before. But the thing is, what, what needs to be appreciated is that these games are very old. These games are um, more than 10 years old, I think, in pretty much all cases, more than 20 years old, and that was a pretty stupid thing of me to do. So, you know, we're talking about a completely different era. Today it may may seem cliche and even ridiculous to do these things because these concepts are so antiquated as to be not even worth redoing. It's not worth, at least not in a completely straight way like this. I mean, there have been remakes of Load Runner, of course. Sierra made Load Runner The Legend Returns, which is actually quite a nice takeoff on Load Runner. I mean, it's the same basic game, but uh, besides obviously updated graphics and sound and music, it, it has a few twists and variations on the familiar format. So they did, they did something a little bit different with it. Um, and, you know, there are still many games today which do something similar. They basically put a put a new spin on a game concept that's been around forever. But uh, you, you have to understand, and I think it, it makes sense when you think about it, when this game came out, I can't shoot through this platform that I'm on because that's why it looks different. Um, 
this type of game was not something uh, cliche. I mean, it had been done, of course. It had been done in the form of Load Runner, but it was something that hadn't been done that long ago. And so there was still sort of room for somebody to say, hey, you know, let's make a, a Load Runner clone for the PC. Today it would be unthinkable that you would actually ask somebody to send you $15 to, to, uh, for, the, for this game. But anyway, uh, let's go ahead and quit out of that. So once again, we see that, uh, that registration notice. And with a CompuServe user ID, I remember using CompuServe. I actually did use it uh, for a very brief period of time, for I think literally about six hours, because I was a kid and my mother was paying for it and she didn't pay for it after that. Uh, anyway, moving on, that was Diamond Dash. Not a bad game by any means. I'm, uh, like I said, I'm not complaining about it. Uh, just, again, as usual, I don't really have a lot to say about it. And now we come to a game that needs no introduction. Uh, I think most of you are probably aware, if you're into old, uh, old computer games, you're probably well aware that Duke Nukem got his start as a side-scrolling platformer. Duke Nukem 3D was the first game to take the, uh, this character into a three-dimensional first-person shooter, but uh, there was a Duke Nukem and a Duke Nukem 2, which were side-scrolling platform games. So... Let's go ahead and take a look, just for the very few people, I think, who have never seen this game. Um, let's see. There is actually a catalog that comes with this. I'm wondering, is there a, a README file? I don't see one, but I might just be missing it. There's a foreign.doc, which is probably just for foreign orders. Um, Yeah, this is actually, there's no f readme file that comes with this. Let me just go ahead and quickly page through the catalog here, because I'm curious to see what uh, what's here. So, Apogee, yeah, so here's the original three Commander Keen games this is talking about, Invasion of the Vorticons. Um, here's Goodbye Galaxy, which is Commander Keen's 4 and 5. Here's Duke Nukem. Um, Jumpman Lives, which is a very old game that is mostly forgotten today, except in a very, very historical sort of way. Dark Ages, we've already seen Dark Ages. Um, and I don't have too much more to say about that. Pharaoh's Tomb, wow. This is a game that even I haven't played. I probably have seen it, but uh, somehow I just... Yeah, Arctic Adventure. This is a game that I did play. I did actually play through the entire uh, shareware episode of Arctic Adventure. Not a bad little uh, adventure. Monuments of Mo Monuments of Mars, which is very similar to Arctic Adventure. Biohazard. Yeah, that's another platformer. Um, Crystal Caves. We've already seen that. Secret Agent or Secret Agent Man, which is exactly the same ca game uh, as Crystal Caves, except with different... Uh, I mean, it's a different game, but it uses the exact same engine. You'll see right away once we get to Secret Agent that it's a very similar game. Paganitsu, which is a uh, sort of puzzle game. Oh boy, the Cross games, which are basically um, uh, basically to Apogee as ZZT or ZZT is to Epic Mega Games. I mean, really, uh, I mean, they're good games, but uh, I think they're kind of an acquired taste today. Trek Trivia, wow, this is a game that even I haven't played. Oh, because it's about Star Trek. I'm actually not much of a Trekkie, to be honest. I don't, don't, don't necessarily have anything against Star Trek, but I'm not uh, not actually uh, the kind of guy who's watched every episode of Star Trek, to be honest. Uh, so let's just go ahead and run Duke Nukem. Loading, Apogee Software, and that went by so fast. I'm actually tempted to slow this down a bit, but I think the game will run all right once we start it. So let's see, we press F1 for help. Um, is there a story? No, I guess the uh, the story starts when you run the game. But anyway, here are the instructions, which I'm not going to bother to read. Oh, this is the story. I chose instructions, but I chose the story instead. There you go. You have four lines of keys that control the character, and that's pretty much it. Important information, which is not actually that important. Well, I guess maybe it is if you don't know it, but... Um, previews and main demo. Oh, this is a demo. Alright, this is a demo of Duke Nukem. Duke Nukem is one of the best feature-packed games ever made for an IBM PC. That was probably true back in, uh, in whenever this game was made. Alright, let's go ahead and start a new game. 
so you're the pitiful hero they sent to stop me. I, Dr. Proton, will soon rule the world. You're wrong, Proton Breath. I'll be done with you and still have time to watch Oprah. I suppose the joke being that, uh, it, it's a little bit silly to think of a, a very manly man like Duke watching Oprah. And I apologize if my Duke Nukem voice is not quite up to snuff. So these blocks fall down and you can get points for shooting them, which I failed to do there. You get a, a few extra points if you, uh, successfully shoot them. And yes, you do lose health if they hit you. Uh, so this is Duke Nukem. This is the original, uh... This is where it all started. This is really the uh, the first game in what became a relatively long-running character. Most recently, of course, with uh, Duke Nukem Forever. And I'm not going to touch too much on that because more has already been said about Duke Nukem Forever than really ever deserved to be said, in my opinion. But, uh, yeah, these cans... Uh, they give you one point of health if you grab them, but I'm already at full health, so what I'll do is I'll shoot it, and then grab it, and if you shoot a can, it shoots up into the air, and then if you, uh, grab it, then you get some extra bonus points. Hey, okay. Oh, and the dynamite... Yeah, you have to avoid the dynamite, because it will obviously harm you if the blast touches you, and you want to shoot the, the chicken or the turkey, because a, uh shot chicken or turkey restores two points of health, whereas a regular turkey leg restores one point of health. Yes, eat turkey to increase your health. I was just about to say I'm not sure if that's chicken or turkey, but then the game clarified that for me, so thank you, game. Once again, a can of soda, which I'll just shoot, and the... Whoa. Uh... Uh... I'm not sure if this is going to show up on the video, but... Um... Hmm. I wonder if there is a way to restore this to the proper orientation. Yes, there we go. Um... I'm not sure how that's going to show up on the video, to be honest. It appears that the laptop that I'm on flips the screen around if you hold down Control and Alt at the same time and then press the arrow keys, which is a frequent event when you're playing a game like this, and it seems to have messed up the, uh, seems to have messed up the, uh, video recording as well. Ah, but the game redraws itself. My apologies, uh, I was not expecting that to happen. These, uh, this is the problem with playing DOS games on, uh, on recent installations of, uh, of operating systems which use different keystrokes for everything in the kitchen sink. And then if you have a keystroke in the game, which, uh, which matches that of a keystroke of your emulating system, then everything gets really crazy and, uh, boy. Anyway. Oh, that's a, uh, yeah, that's a power-up that increases your health to maximum, which you can't see because my health bar is not showing up properly now. Boy, that was an exciting event. That was probably a bigger adventure than the uh, than the game that I'm playing. But anyway, uh, let's go ahead and quit out of this. Yes, let's quit. And, oh, I made it into the uh, Duke Nukem... Uh, I think that's supposed to be Hall of Fame, but it says Haim of Fame. Well, I'm very honored to be in the Duke Nukem... Hame of fame. Uh, all right, uh, let's go ahead and quit out of that, and let's continue on with the recording. Once again, I apologize for the uh, for the uh, bizarre screen glitchery there. I'll, I'll have to be careful with the uh, with these keystrokes in the future. See, these are the things that you never really know until you accidentally discover them. I could have used this laptop for a hundred years and never known that Control Alt arrow keys actually rotates the screen, but just. Uh, accidentally discovering it while playing Duke Nukem, I am now aware of a feature which I will probably never, ever use. Uh, Alright, coming back to the list of games. Ah, Elfland! Now this is uh, Sophomore and Pro 17. Um, this is a game which is kind of... Um, 
I don't know. I, I guess I'll, I'll wait until I, I, I run it to talk about it. Is there a, a readme file anywhere here? There is an order form file, but I'm kind of looking for... Uh... Oh, there is no documentation available. That's nice. Thanks. Okay, I guess I can just uh, run... I started typing wolf because I'm so used to running Wolfenstein, but no, it's not wolf, it's elf. Elfland. Uh, what's, the, what's the executable file here? Oh, elf1. There are a bunch of files called Elfland one, but then the executable itself is Elf one. All right. Um, oh boy, that's oh everything's going all crazy. Um, those of you who've been watching my channel for a long time may remember that uh, several years ago I did make a video of me talking over playing this game. Um, but for completeness' sake, I'll go ahead and include footage of games which I may have already featured on my channel before. Um, you can read the Beginner's Guide to Elfland, which uh, I'm going to go ahead and quickly skip through. And I guess that's uh, that's enough of that. I'll just go, let's see the, uh, the ordering information, because I'm curious whether... Uh, I wonder if you can actually still order. I know that this game was still available for order for a long time, even well, well after it... Uh, like more than 10 years after it was past its time, but uh, I wonder if it's still available today. Well, who knows? You can check it out online. You might be able to uh, find a, uh, an instance of the game still being sold. But anyway, let's go and start the game. So you can play as Elfie or Elfida, the latter being uh, a female equivalent. There is really no, uh, no significant difference between the two, so I'll play as Elfida for no good reason other than that I like her a nice little red hairband. And of course we'll play on very easy because I am very bad at games. And here's the game. So basically you... it sort of combines different aspects of... Um, of... Uh, I guess you'd say adventure games with platformers. I mean it is obviously a platformer. At heart this is a platform action game. But you can walk up to characters and talk to them and you have conversations of a sort. So it's kind of an adventure game, but not really very much. More like just a just a action game with brief interludes and that PC speaker sound. I often like PC speaker sound, but I'm wondering, can I? Uh... Ah, that's nice, nice ad lib sound. Let's actually be bold and swap that. Keep the music on and turn sound effects off. I think that's usually how I prefer to play this game. Um, because the sound effects are a bit jarring and they do sort of, I think they actually cause the game to pause whenever the sound effect plays, which is also a bit, uh, also a bit annoying. Uh, so here's where you get the main plot of the game. This guy is telling you, um, stuff which I'm not going to bother reading, but this is basically the premise of the game. Uh, and I think you do get a health bonus if you touch the sun, which I think I failed to do because I'm terrible at these games. Um, and now that we've talked to that fellow at the top of the tree, we can walk outside and try to avoid the bird because the bird will hurt us, so that bouncing black thing. Yeah, I, I really like this game. I think this game is something very special, honestly. I mean, it might look like a silly children's game. Uh, it probably is targeted at children. I think it's really more of a kid's game than anything, but it's, it's something very... Um, I consider it something quite special, honestly. I, I don't... I can't really put my finger on why. It's just... It's, it's a platform game without constant twitch action. I mean, I was going to say it's a game where not everything is constantly trying to kill you, but actually that's clearly not true. I mean, clearly everything is constantly trying to kill me in this game. But it's it has something to it that most of these types of games don't have. And I couldn't necessarily say what that is, what exactly is it that this game has that other games don't have. But um, I hope that it's apparent just from watching it, even if I can't put it necessarily into words. I hope that you folks can see, just from looking at the game, that there is something quite special about it that a lot of games, uh, that most games don't have. There's just a certain sort of heart to this game that uh, you don't normally see in a lot of games. I mean, even children's games, it's, I mean, it's a kid's game, yes, probably, but it doesn't talk down to kids. It's not about... Uh, you know, patting kids on the head and making them feel special for doing something that is really uh, not in any way challenging. I mean, this game actually is quite challenging. I, I guess that might be why why I like it. I, I don't like it. I mean, even when I was a kid, I didn't like it when people talked down to me. I didn't like it when people talked to me as if I was a kid, even when I was a kid, because 
Yeah, okay, I might have been a kid, but um, I appreciate it when people show me the basic respect of, of speaking to me like I can speak normal English. And this game kind of does that. I mean, the game doesn't try to uh, put you down or make you feel like... Uh, you know, I, th I think you know what I'm saying. It's, uh, I mean, it's a, it's a good game. It's a fun game. It is quite challenging. Uh, you, you actually do get a sense that you've really pulled something off if you finish this game because uh, it can be quite tough, especially on the more difficult difficulty levels. So, I have, I have a soft spot in my heart for this game, but I can't necessarily explain why. So, anyway, I think that's enough of that. Let's go ahead and get out of that, and uh, and yeah, let's get back to. Uh, back to the list here. So moving right along, that was Elfland. After Elfland comes FBI Fred. I did relatively recently actually do uh, an accidental full let's play of this game. I wasn't even intending to play through the entire game, but um, I did. Uh, I made a video talking about DOSBox, and in the act of that I showed this game as sort of an example of uh, what DOSBox can do, namely the uh, DAOM version of DOSBox, which can do save states, which stock DOSBox does not do. Um, but I ended up talking for so long that I actually accidentally played through the entire game without realizing that I was uh, that I was playing through it. So um, I don't have a whole lot to say about this game. I think the game kind of speaks for itself. So I'll just go ahead and start it. And we can uh, just briefly see. Uh, I mean, it's it's running too fast. If I was going to seriously play this game, I would I would probably slow it down so that it would be more playable. But let's be perfectly honest. The game is a bit ridiculous. I mean, I do like the look of this game. I, I have always been very much drawn to the EGA sort of look of this game because it has a wonderful um, graphic style to it. I, I really do love the, the look of the graphics. But everything else about the game is is not that great. I mean, the, the physics, the, the controls are abominable. They are really among the worst controls that I've ever seen in any game ever, which I think is saying a lot, to be perfectly honest. Uh, I mean, if, if you really want to see just how bad game controls can be, you should try playing this. And like I said, I, I would normally slow this down so it would be more playable, but I think it actually fits better like this because this is sort of like... I have the feeling this is sort of a scene that should uh, should have Yakety Sax playing in the background. Um, or it was up until the point where I died there, so anyway. Uh, let's go ahead and get out of that. I think that was enough. That was, that was enough of FBI Fred to kind of give you an idea of what the game is like. I, I don't want to insult Mr. Uh, Sp Spezzano. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. I don't want to insult him too much because it's clear that a lot of effort did go into this game, and really with a bit of polishing, it could have been a much better game. I really do, like I said, I really do love the look of the game. Um, it is in, in some ways a fun game. It's just not, uh, it's just the controls are terrible as, as a game. It, it just, it plays terribly. Uh, everything else about it is actually kind of nice, but um, just, the, you know, when, when you, you're playing a game and the controls are, are working against you constantly, it's really, uh, it's kind of a counterproductive experience to try and play that game. It's kind of unfortunate, but uh, I, I would actually like to see that game remade in such a way that it's uh, a little bit more playable. But anyway, moving on, we have Galacta. Um, this game's name is so generic that even I don't remember what it is. I mean, you might have the impression that I I actually distinctly remember most of the games on this CD, and I do, but I don't actually remember this one because the name is just so nondescriptive. It's probably a... Is this a clone of... I don't even remember, is is the, the game I'm thinking of Galaxian or Galaxa or... Ga, ga, basically kind of like Space Invaders, except um, different. I don't know, let's see what it is. Sophomore 7 Pro 7. Um, uh, yeah, so it's Galacta. All right, I wonder what AL is. I'm curious what AL is. Um, am I gonna? I'm gonna play it safe and not run that because you never know what random exec executables might do. Even though I'm pretty sure that the stuff on the CD is safe, but I, I'm just just a little bit wary of of just finding random EXEs sitting around. Uh, wouldn't want to get myself into trouble without doing a little bit of basic protection to try and uh, ward off whatever that might be. Even though I highly doubt that it's anything dangerous. But anyway, let's go ahead and play Galacta. Joystick not detected. That's true. I don't have a joystick. Galacta, the battle for Saturn. All right, let's go ahead and uh, 
for a space for more info, and here is some more info. Oh, I see it's a scrolling text file. All right. Um, this is obviously a story. Oh, Uranus vanishes. Well, that uh, that can happen sometimes. I've uh, had that uh, had that happen before. Um, okay, I guess that was the end of that. Okay, uh, let's press enter or button to play. I'm going to assume that means joystick button. Um, yeah, it's 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 this game, which has been remade and re remade and, and whoa, how do I fire? Oh, control fires. It's it's been made and remade and re remade and re re remade so many times in so many different forms that I honestly don't even remember what the original title of it was. I think it's Galaxian, but. I don't, for some reason this game doesn't stick out in my memory because I always get it mixed up with Space Invaders, even though it, it is obviously, <coughs> excuse me, it is obviously a different game from Space Invaders, but somehow I just can't distinguish between these different types of games very well. Um, it just, it just all blurs together in my memory. Somehow, I, I don't have fond childhood memories of these games. I mean, it's not a bad game. But what can I say? It it is what it is. You're, you're you're down there at the bottom. You shoot at the stuff at the top, and hopefully hopefully you do better than I'm doing, because I'm yeah. I mean that was I, I'm doing embarrassingly badly here. I'm sure there's some way you're supposed to dodge those things, uh, but I'm just I'm not even interested enough to really bother trying to figure out how you're supposed to dodge those things because this game just really doesn't somehow it just doesn't do it for me. I don't know. I can't really. I can't really explain why. I mean, I should love this game because, uh, because I mean, the sound effects are great. It has that really crispy sort of DOS sound effect sound to it. So the sound effects are great. The, the graphics, well, I mean, the graphics are very simple. They're just basically dots. I mean, you have just a handful of clusters of dots, and that's the graphics. But, I mean, I mean, the presentation is, is very nice. I, I do like the game. I do like um, the way that it's put together, I guess. But as a game, as something that I would play, it just somehow, it, it's just not my thing. I'm just not really into these types of games that you play the same sequence in over and over for hours to uh, try and beat your high score. That's not what I, it's actually not what I play games for, quite honestly. Um, but I, I don't want to be too critical because, you know, again, I'm sure some people are really into that. So anyway, uh, this uh, is from Albino Frog Software in Hollywood, not in Hollywood, California, but rather in Hollywood, Florida. So, anyway, uh, yeah, a game with, uh, I already forgot the name, Galacta, yeah, Galacta. Moving on, we have Galactic Battle. This is another game with a, a name so generic that I don't remember it. Soft Mix Gala. Is this another, is this another one? Is this another, is this another game with the same premise and same, okay, there is a gb.txt, so let's go ahead and read that quickly. Galactic Battle is a space shoot 'em up. This sounds very much like it's going to be exactly the same game again. I'm going to guess that it's the same game. I'm just going to quickly scroll through this in case anyone wants to read it. I highly doubt that anyone's going to pause. I highly doubt that anyone's going to pause this video to actually read all of this, but for completeness sake, I don't want to just skip this because there might actually be somebody who, you know, a few thousand years in the future is watching this video and uh and thinks, uh, you know, gosh, I uh, really wish that that person had actually gone through the whole documentation because otherwise... It... Anyway, uh, all right, I have no idea what any of that said. Let's just go ahead and run the game. It looks very much like, yeah, it's the, uh, yeah, here we go. It's, it's, it's very obviously not the, the exact same game. But it it's basically the same game. I mean, the the enemies are different. Their patterns are different. Uh, the controls and the movement feel somewhat different. Notably, in this game, I can actually go up and down, whereas in the previous game, I could only go left and right. So okay, it's it's a different game, but it's the, it, it's the same game. It's it's this is the same as whatever that was. So yeah. Wait, what am I? Oh, here we go. Oh, dock with starbase. Okay, there we go. I docked with the starbase to re-energize. Um, 
That was actually kind of a cool sound effect, even though it was a very simple sound effect. And I don't want to sound like I'm too critical of these games because, you know, I, I'm not expecting a lot from these games in terms of their graphics or sound. I mean, you folks, anyone who's been watching my videos for a while knows that I, I love this kind of thing. I mean, I love these types of sound effects and graphics and all that. I mean, I, I, I don't have anything against these very simple sort of EGA graphics or these beepy boopy uh, PC speaker sound effects. That's not that's not something I have a problem with. I just I, I just don't really get inspired by these games where you play the same thing over and over and it's exactly the same as really literally countless other games in the sense that I've lost count of how many games I've seen which are basically this. So I don't know what can I say. Um, I'll just quit out of that. Quit. Are you sure? Yes. Um, I've actually already been going for half an hour, so I'm thinking of closing the video, but I'd like to end on a more positive note because I've been a little bit critical of the last couple of games, not because they're bad games, but just, you know, they're just, they just don't really grab me. They're so unoriginal. Um, gotcha, I think, is, uh, Softborn and Pro 1. I think I remember this. If I remember right, it's, uh... Uh, there is a readme file associated with this. Yeah, uh, I have to be honest, I also don't know what the original... Uh, I, I probably sound ignorant, but I actually don't know what the original name of this... Uh, this uh, game is, because I know, I know it is based on a... Uh, let's see, Space Bar to Start game. I know it is based on a classic arcade game, um, and I, who are you? Uh, I guess I am, that's me. Speed desired, uh, no thank you. Oh, 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 um, speed desired, zero. Let's, let's, let's play it safe and go with zero. That is a number. What are you talking about? That is a number, arch clock. Um, is, is one a number? Okay. What makes one a number but not zero? Zero is also a number. Learn to math. Sound? Uh, yeah, sure. Let's do sound. Why not? Yeah, it's it's this, and it's actually going way too fast. Hold on. Let me slow down. DOS box. Worried for a moment that that keystroke might also uh, impede my... Uh, my uh, somehow cause the laptop to do something unpredictable. But anyway... Uh, Oh, here we go. Use the arrow keys to control that thing. You've probably seen this game before. It's basically... Uh... Now it's running quite slowly, obviously because I slowed DOSBox way down, but yeah. The premise is exactly this. You try not to touch that thing that's moving around, and you have to cut out pieces of this playing field to kind of isolate that thing that's moving around so it doesn't have too much room to move around in. So, and you can't, you can't let that thing touch either you or any of the uh, the lines that you're actively drawing. So once you get to the other side, once you get to the end, uh, to the periphery of the play area, then you can, uh, oh, did I finish? I think I finished that level. Once you clear off enough of the level, then you, um, Yeah, okay. I'll go and speed this up because that's running more slowly than, uh... Okay, I gained a life. That's great. Um... I want to say this was originally called Kicks because that's what I saw in the, uh... I, I saw a reference to that in the README file, so I'm gonna guess that was the original name of the arcade game that this is based on. Also, for some reason, that thing is not actually... Oh, it touched my, uh... touched my line there. Um... Um, for some reason this game just never really appealed much to me, even the in the original arcade form. You can probably tell, I don't even remember the name of it. It's just kind of, uh, uh I don't know. Um, reminds me of Jazz Ball, which is kind of a similar concept, except, uh, somehow seems a little bit better in my opinion, but, uh, I mean, Jazz Ball seems better than this. I don't know, what can I say? Uh, I really want to get something that's uh, something that's uh, that I can end on a little bit more of a positive note on 
Uh, heavy Water Jogger might just be that game. Wow, let's see, what comes after Heavy Water Jogger? Helios. Oh, that's another, uh, that's another interesting game. Okay, I'll save Helios for next time. Let's go ahead and play Heavy Water Jogger. This is another game that I have made a video of in the past years ago. Many, uh, like more than five years ago, I did make a, um, a video of Heavy Water Jogger. Sophomore 7 Pro 11. So... Back then, I said pretty much all that I had to say about this game, but I will go ahead and briefly just run through this, uh, just again for completeness sake, so you can just read read everything. How long does this go on for? Um, boy, this goes on for a while. Is that really? Okay, I think that's the end. All right, let's just go ahead and run it quickly, and we'll see. Um, yeah, start with sound. All right, Heavy Water Jogger is distributed on Try Before You Buy basis, commonly known as Shareware, except usually without the camel case. Delaying for three seconds, because three seconds is a long time to wait. Yes, thanks, Luke. No, don't print order form now. I don't even have a printer attached to this machine. I wonder what happens if I say yes and it tries to print, given that I don't have a printer. Anyway, viable software alternatives. Presents. Heavy water. Um, can I can I just actually get to the game? I'd really like to just play the game at this point. Jogger, yes. Okay. So, um, there's a whole story here which I'm not going to bother reading. Again, I made a video on this game in the past, so I don't really feel the need to say very much about it. But uh, the premise is very simple. Uh, it's uh, yeah, you can't save. But basically the way the game works is... I'll play it on the easiest level, which is the so-called walkthrough, which is actually still quite difficult if you don't know what you're doing. Oh, I recently discovered the actual piece of classical music, which I think that's supposed to be... Just waiting for the music to finish. There we go. I actually recently heard uh, a piece of music which I think might be the the uh, basis for that uh, sort of jingle tune that we just heard. Um, I don't remember. I, I wrote it down somewhere, but I don't remember where now. Uh, but anyway, okay. Excuse me. So this is Heavy Water Jogger. It plays kind of like a top-down version of a Sierra Adventure in that you move around with the arrow keys and then you can stop by pressing the direction that you're already moving in. There are some special keys like M to show the map. This is randomly generated. It is different every time you play the game, so don't try to memorize this because it will be different next time you play. Your goal is to get to that thing in the middle surrounded by the yellow circle, and once you get there, then it will... Um... Well, anyway. So the idea here is that you're stuck in this power plant, which is about to blow up, and you need to get to the middle to turn off the... Uh... Uh, turn off the nuclear reactor and prevent a meltdown from happening. Um, I like this game in the sense that it has a very original premise uh, and it has a few clever things about it. Um, oh dear, I got caught by that robot. Those robots are easily one of the most annoying things about this game. Um, the, the game certainly has an interesting premise. It, it, its gameplay mechanics are completely unlike anything that I've ever seen before. I mean, okay, well, obviously I've seen top-down games like this before, but um, a lot of the ideas in the game are very unique. Um, and I like that. I mean, I praise the game for that. I praise the game for its originality. I do not like it very much as a game because, quite frankly, it's just not a... It's not a lot of fun as a game. I mean, whoops, mostly it's based on pure luck. I mean, the maze is different every time you play, and so it's hard to really definitively say uh, what you're supposed to do unless you actually can somehow remember the, the map that's at the beginning. And I think there are maps elsewhere in the in the maze, but I mean, oh, this is ridiculous. How am I supposed to? Okay, I can... I can do this, and then do that. I guess that's... Oh, that's right, and I think falling into the... Uh... Yeah, falling into one of those pits also causes you to lose those robots. Whoops! Pfft. 
Duh. So, um... So if you want to lose a robot, you can deliberately fall into a pit if you have no other alternative. Um... Yeah, it's just not a lot of fun, I, I have to say. I mean, I I'm sorry to say it because it's clear that a lot of creativity went into this game, and... There are some things that I like about it. I mean, there are some things about this game that are really... that it, Oh, crud, I'm at, at a dead end. And the robot zaps me back to the beginning. There are really a lot of things that are very, uh, very nice about this game. And then there are just some things which are just so aggravating and so... Uh, things that just make me say, why did you do that? Why did you make the game that way? I mean, I, I understand, I guess, why they did it. They deliberately wanted to make a game that you can't lose... Uh, I mean, you can see I've got a time limit there, but if I run out of time, the game just resets and says, oh, 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 let's just forget that happened. If you run out of health, the game just says, oh, let's just forget that happened. Um, basically, anything wrong that you can do, the game just says, oh, well, you know, by some by some accident, you, uh, you're you back at the start of the game. So you can basically keep trying as much as you want, um, but the game compensates for that by making it really annoying and really frustrating to try and, and finish and try to beat the game. And that's just... It, it's... It's not in the game designer's best interests to make the game annoying and frustrating on purpose. There are enough games, there are plenty enough games that do that accidentally without trying to be that way. But when you try to make your game annoying and frustrating and try to challenge the player by basically sending them back to the beginning whenever anything goes wrong so they have to do the whole thing over again, when you try to kind of play with the player that way, um, it's, it's to no one's benefit. I mean, obviously the player doesn't enjoy it, and if you're trying to sell a game, or even just, even if you're giving away the game for free, if you just want people to play your game, um, it's it, it doesn't benefit anyone to, to make a game like that, quite honestly. Unless you're trying to make something like Takashi's Challenge, and your your whole purpose is just to try to give a giant middle finger to every video gamer in the world, but that's something a bit different. Anyway, Heavy Water Jogger. Uh, like I said, I, I'm fond of this game. I have some fond memories of it just because it is so original and so unusual, and I, I like uh, I like games that are like that. But as a game, it's just, yeah, uh, it's uh, it's very frustrating. I'll get out of here, and uh, yeah. There we go. That was Heavy Water Jogger. So I guess that was a, a reasonably positive note to end on. I mean, I had some, some negative things and some complaints to give, but... Uh, I, I like at least showing off that game because it is so unusual. It's so unlike anything that you'll probably ever see before, uh, before ever see again in any other. It's it's unlike anything that you have ever seen before or that you likely will ever see again in any other game. So I like that. But anyway, uh, I guess that's it for me. Uh, thanks for watching, everyone. As usual, uh, we'll see you hopefully in the next video. I hope that everyone's doing well and that you're enjoying these games. I apologize, I feel like I didn't react very positively to the games in this video, and that's just because, you know, a lot of them just weren't very, for me personally, they weren't very inspiring, but hopefully we'll see some more games in the future that, um, that are a bit more, uh, I don't know, a bit more original, a bit more inspired. Let's see how that works out. Until then, thanks again for watching everyone, and we will talk to you later, but now I shall say bye-bye for now.